you are uh, all set, Councillor Morris. Thank okay. you. First of all, welcome everybody, and I'd like to call the meeting to order. If anybody has a conflict of interest, please declare it at the appropriate time. I'd like to welcome everybody that's uh, watching us from YouTube. Um, number four item is correspondence. I see we have none. Is that still the case, Amanda? Okay. Delegations, we have none, so we can get right into new business. The first thing on new business is the Parks and Rec update. And I'll turn that over to Amanda, or Katie or Amanda. Who's taking this today? I'll be Katie. taking All it right. today, <laughs> Councillor Morris. Uh, thank you. So uh, thanks very much. So as you can see, uh, there was an update report included on the agenda. I'll just uh, review and go through some of the highlights. Uh, feel free to interrupt and ask questions through the chair at Councillor Morris. Uh, so to start off uh, is our COVID update, and as per the report, you can see that uh, since our last meeting, Lambton Public Health has announced some new guidelines uh, for vaccination requirements for individuals under 12 years old. Uh, so those are in place at our facility uh, and will continue to be as they progress as of November 30th. Uh, of course, masks and screening and all other processes uh, remain in place at the arena as well as our community halls and for rentals. Um, at the Watford Community Arena. Uh, so we're currently open with partial capacity uh, and programs seem to be running well. Um, still using our flex space as our fourth dressing room as needed. Uh, and ICE rental inquiries uh, through Katie is now acting as the primary contact and we are up to date uh, on all rental inquiries uh, and working hard uh, through Katie to keep on top of that for ICE and, um, and facilities. Uh, the final renovations to the arena concession booth and the main floor lobby washroom are uh, going to be completed this week. Uh, the timeline is great. Thursday. So I'll have a little more info on that in our construction update, but that's great, great news uh, for the visitors to the arena. Actually, I lied, it's up next with sub bullet points. So um, uh, this means that with the, off, with the washrooms being able to be utilized, we're able to re release those restrictions on occupancy that we have had in place uh, this season so far. Uh, so we are working, Katie and myself, on updating our COVID operations plan and completing notices to our user groups to advise them uh, that those limitations will be removed. Um, the one restriction to operations that we'll see is in the men's washroom on the main floor lobby, the run of the new washroom, the urinals uh, will not be functional for uh, a little bit. Uh, the, the flush valves uh, are really behind, uh, but the like the toilets and partitions themselves in that uh, room will be functional and operational. Uh, I have spoken on multiple occasions this last uh, week and a half or communicated via email actually uh, with Duane and Sarah, our concession booth leaseholders. Uh, and we are underway in planning. They're aware of the reopening dates and we are planning, they are tentatively planning to reopen following this weekend on Monday. So that's really exciting. So we'll have Monday washrooms and food service. So wonderful. Uh, we're focusing really hard with the contractor on completing some of those final touch-ups uh, before that reopening, things like vent covers in the lobby, uh, final, you know, double coats of painting in certain areas uh, to try to get it as far along as possible so that it'll be exciting uh, when we, and it will be when we're able to welcome everyone back. Um, but it, it seems to be on track. So uh, we're also um, still a little behind on invoicing uh, and communications for advertising at the arena. We do have a few inquiries that I know Katie's touched base with, but uh, we haven't finalized yet. Uh, so that's our focus this week and next week to get those inquiries all responded to uh, and uh, touch base on uh, make contracts for bank board advertising uh, sponsorships and uh, items like that. Uh, again, our COVID plan will be re-updated this week. Our goal, we had a staff meeting today. Our goal is to finalize that plan by Friday uh, so that we can distribute it. So user groups have it uh, in advance for the weekend review and then open on Monday. Um, if we can get it done before that, we'd love to, but 
I've set the deadline of Friday, <laughs> so that's our goal. Um, and of course, uh, with these occupancy limits being restricted, public skating and moms and tots skating uh, can now be revisited and looked at. So that's very exciting. Uh, and uh, Katie is working on coordinating that schedule. Uh, and we're hoping that at the same time as we release our COVID plan on Friday, we'll be able to announce public skating as well. So that's in the dream world, that's the way we'd like to do it so that at the same time, everything goes out and it's a very exciting, we are open, come, okay. you know, come and see us. So that's our plan. Um, Good. Yeah, so that's great. Uh, the other halls are operating as they have been. So that it's the same um, process that we've had in place. And of course, Katie is now uh, responsible for all uh, rental inquiries and is uh, working on that. Uh, I think we will probably just dust off, uh, not dust off, we will revisit uh, that community hall COVID plan as well uh, the, at the same time, just to make sure that there's no updates needed at the same time as we do the arena one. Uh, but I would see minimal updates. Uh, however, the last version, I think, no, there are updates because the last version that was distributed had some restrictions on capacity that I don't think apply anymore. So we're trying to sort through all those items so we can get it, everything in one nice package. Um, the Wofford uh, Warwick Parks in downtown. So uh, the Legion banners, as you know, were installed uh, for the Legion week and they will be removed this Thursday and the new lights will be placed uh, the Christmas lights will be placed up in downtown Watford on Thursday this week. Uh, I will note uh, that we've done an inventory of all the bulbs and all the garland. Uh, and I know there's been some discussion in past years about the garland that goes uh, in the downtown area only from the uh, decoration fixture and kind of coming down the pole. Uh, we, some, it doesn't seem to be in good repair. Uh, so for this year, we are not planning to put up only that garland. Uh, well, and then we lo we're looking at refreshing our decorations for next year. So just so that you know, in case you get any comments. Uh, Wayne, it looks like Martina has a question. Martina? Um, so before we put more money into uh, the candles, will there be any discussion about um, you know, whether we're keeping them or going another route. I just feel like they've become very dated and I've seen some really nice, well, I'm traveling for hockey. I've seen some really nice stuff in other towns. Um, so it might be something to consider before we put more money into that. Absolutely. I, I have heard similar feedback, Martina, and um, we had actually had in our first round of budget for 2022, a replacement of Christmas decorations. Uh, however, it, it didn't make the final uh, budget cut for 2022. Uh, but I see next year uh, that we would have that discussion and kind of hopefully pinpoint a direction to budget for 2023. And I think that's why, I know Garland's inexpensive, but that's partly why uh, we just decided to keep it just the fixture this year. But yes, I think we should talk about that in future. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, moving on to ballparks. So uh, the, the same discussions that uh, were outlined previously to you uh, about the netting are, uh, I don't have a lot of updates <laughs> on them. So they're still pending. We are still waiting uh, to hear back from Hydro One uh, regarding the Warwick ballpark and realignment of the electric the hydro poles at that location. So to my note, we haven't found had yet a price back from them. Uh, I do know that uh, we've recently staff have held meetings with the contractor for the netting uh, and we are working through that process with them about reinstalling them at another location. Uh, but at this time we haven't reached um, a final decision, but we will continue to work with the contractor over the winter uh, in the hopes that we can get that done early in the spring so as not to interrupt the ball season with that installation. Um, the concession upgrades uh, at the ballpark had been on hold. Uh, well, we were awaiting some information, uh, but 
I did, we actually met with the, cons with the contractor on site this afternoon uh, with a number of staff people to kind of outline the remaining items that had to be done. Uh, and in follow up to that discussion, we've asked the concession leaseholders to meet on site potentially this Friday, just so we can go over layout uh, and electrical requirements so that we can finalize that project. There's not a lot to be done left. So I believe it's optim like it's feasible to com complete it by the end of the year, just depends on turnaround timelines. But if it doesn't happen by the end of the year, it will absolutely happen before the season next year. That's the key point. That's the key point, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, so I have no updates on the library or the museum at this time. Skip that one. <laughs> um, the Lefford Community Arena and Expansion. So this is as of Friday. So we already talked about the main floor lobby washrooms and concession booth being completed. That's very exciting. Uh, again, some additional painting uh, and minor fixes are underway. Uh, we're looking at options for furniture for the viewing platform and flex space. However, I think it's reasonable. Um, I think to set expectations, we should plan on when we reopen with the new dressing rooms, which will hopefully uh, be before Silver Stick, we'll probably be using the same furniture that we have. We won't have acquired new furniture by that time, unfortunately. So just to set the expect, we'll arrange it as nice as we can and it'll look great, uh, but they won't be uh, the nice new kind of permanent furniture that we hope to have in the space uh, in the future. Uh, fire inspection and fire alarm verification just was completed last week. Um, the construction of the new dressing rooms at the arena is well underway. Uh, and the contractor, we had a site meeting today, is on track to turn over possession to us on December 8th. Uh, so the day before our Silver Stick tournament <laughs> starts. Um, uh, we did review kind of the specifics about when painting and skate tile and fixtures will be installed, and it is feasible uh, to deliver this. Uh, of course, hopefully everything flows exactly the way we hope that it will, so it's feasible. Um, if, in the hopes that this is possible, I can flag, though, that the showers will not be available in the new dressing rooms. And that again has to do with one of those valves that we see on back order for the urinals uh, in the main floor lobby washroom. Yes, John. Yeah, so that sounds sounds good, Amanda. So they can turn it over to you or is, um, without the showers and yes. or silver stick, we use them at least for dressing and yes. like the three, all three of them will be in the same. Yes. That's what they've advised, yes. So okay. the, there will be a, a toilet, a functioning toilet in each dressing room. Uh, there will be a functioning sink. It might be a temporary sink in each yeah. dressing room, but there will not be a shower in each of the new three dressing rooms. But yes, they should have benches. They should be painted. They'll have skate tile. They'll be lit and heated. So <laughs> it'll, that's the goal. That's okay. the goal. That's good news. Yes, it is very good news. And it, yeah. uh, hearing their work plan, it's, it's feasible. So that's we, very uh, We have a silver sick meeting on Thursday, so I'll update them then. So thank you. Excellent. Um, and the tender for the workshop on the north side of the arena uh, was delayed this year, but we're planning to issue it in 2020. Any other questions on the arena before we, the construction progress? I have uh, just a question, I guess, for Katie, maybe if she can look into it for me. When we did the tour a uh, oh, month ago or so, there's a couple headbangers right on the lobby coming from the west. Did they get corrected? I think one was a sign and one was a beam that needs to be painted or something to show up. So I I, I actually think, Councillor Morris, I was with you when we yes, did our test yes. walk to see how tall they were. Yeah. Um, I think you're referring to on the accessible viewing ramp, uh, the sprinkler yes. pipes are along the wall closest to the rink. And uh, if you walk directly close to the wall, they are, I didn't hit them, but someone who was six feet tall, their head might hit them. Well, I just think we should get them marked before uh, we get into uh, 
full capacity uh, so nobody hits their head and comes back on us when we know there's a problem. We absolutely, uh, thank you for flagging that, uh, can work towards that. Uh, we are working on some additional signage this week uh, to better mark entrance and exit because we will be maintaining the same model we have with the main entrance as entrance and exit through the side door. Uh, so we can look at some caution or yellow something uh, to okay. mark the hazard there as well. On my list now. Okay, thanks, Katie. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, so, Is there any um, other questions? Okay, Amanda, good. please continue. Thank you. Uh, on to the uh, fundraising campaign for our East Lambton Community Complex. Uh, so as you know, uh, George and Rhonda Noel have uh, graciously accepted the position as co-chairs uh, and recruitment for the steering committee is underway. I'm actually meeting with George and Rhonda after this meeting tonight. Uh, so that's very exciting. Uh, we did hold the groundbreaking ceremony uh, on October 22nd, uh, and we were very uh, pleased to, on behalf of the fundraising committee, just all announced that we accepted a donation from the Watford Rotary Club of $25,000, and we appreciate their support. I did attach a nice photo of that to our report here. Um, so that's very excited. And we're looking to, um, I have here a kickoff prior to the end of the year. It may not be prior to the end of the year, but uh, I can tell you that uh, with George and Rhonda, we are excited about supporting them and moving this part of the project uh, along quickly. So uh, stay tuned for more information on that. Um, I have just the Parks and Rec Tourism and Culture Master Plan. It, essentially uh, key items from it were implemented in the 2022 budget. I have no other specific update on that plan today for you. Uh, the 2022 budget, though, uh, was in the capital budget was included uh, in your package as an attachment. Uh, the recommendation, the budget recommendations from here are driven by a few documents. Uh, one being we have a uh, building needs condition assessment study. So it goes through all of our facilities and outlines what is in poor condition and is a, is a risk. Uh, so that, that outlines some of our operational and capital budget. Um, and the other is life cycle of fleet management of assets. So for lawnmower replacements, those kinds of things. Uh, and, um, and then of course the new hall and furniture. Uh, we also, in addition to the uh, these capital expenses, of course, we have the East Lambton Community Complex that we're building, uh, and the township was able to secure bridge financing uh, from Infrastructure Ontario to support that construction build, uh, which was very good. <laughs> That's very good. We can pay the bills. Um, and the operation budget, I want to flag uh, we have included, I didn't include detail in here, but we have included allocations to support um, additional operational support through our staffing. Uh, I know that we, we haven't discussed that in detail as a team yet, uh, because we won't need to look at that until the new hall is ready and operational uh, or close to. But uh, we anticipate that some additional either part-time or full-time resources will be needed to just offset what we hope will be a very high demand uh, facility. But it's in review uh, and the proposals don't exist yet, uh, but we budgeted uh, accordingly for something for council's future consideration. So just wanna flag that. Um, the other thing in relation to the budget is uh, we are carrying uh, some capital projects from 2021 that have not yet been completed in parks and recreation. So uh, we will be meeting as a senior uh, leadership team in the coming weeks just to review what those are and to delegate amongst our team so that we can cover those until our vacancy uh, is filled in early 2022. Okay. okay. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Uh, so uh, human resources uh, update, uh, just some updates here. So for the time being, um, I, uh, the CAO clerk has assumed the role of the acting Parks and Recreation Manager. 
Um, all facility rentals and inquiries are being processed through uh, Katie, our Parks and Rec and Administrative and Facilities Assistant. Uh, and also, I told Katie she's acting as my brain <laughs> sometimes to help me just track, uh, help us help the department track the other inquiries that come in that aren't necessarily specifically related to rentals and ICE. But it, we're we've got a solid team, so I, I'm sure we'll be we will be good. Um, we are holding weekly operations meetings uh, and uh, staff meetings to make, just make sure that we're communicating between everyone internally uh, so they all have uh, the information they need to provide the best customer service. So today, for example, we had a Parks and Rec Department meeting uh, and we spoke preemptively about Silver Stick and kind of what it was looking like, what, you know, and they, they raised some questions that we'll be bringing forward uh, to nothing serious, but to when we meet with the Silver Stick Board, uh, just so everyone knows what the expectations are and roles and responsibilities and we can best support our users. Um, we did an uh, interview uh, recently for the full-time and, and part-time Parks and Recreation Labor positions. Uh, all the interviews are uh, completed and we're in the final stages of recruitment. I am hoping that uh, all the positions that we are looking to fill will be accepted and finalized at the end of this week. So stay tuned <laughs> for announcements on that. Uh, and uh, the recruitment for the vacancy of the Parks and Recreation Manager position was posted um, last week on November 17th. And it does close, I think, December 17th. It might be 16th. Uh, and so we're hoping to proceed with interviews for that position in early in the new year, early in the new year. And then I added this section more for me so that I can remember that <laughs> we were, I knew about these inquiries and just to give you an update and I am a table person. So that's how you see this information. Um, I just wanted to give an update on a few requests that we had. Uh, two from the Watford Rotary Club, one on up, they'd like to assume responsibility for uh, taking care of the storybook walk um, and stories in the in the signs uh, on, along the trail. And I, I approve that. So they are going to go ahead and do that. And we're very happy to have their support and partnership in keeping that amenity uh, up to date because I don't believe it's always been kept up to date. So this will be wonderful and we appreciate their partnership. Um, I've also had a request from the Wofford Rotary Club regarding a friendly uh, little library. And it's, uh, if you're not familiar with what that means, it's like a picture almost like a giant birdhouse yeah. <laughs> with a little book that you leave a book, take a book, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, and the Wofford Rotary Club is uh, proposed to install it on Sunset Ave where the community garden is currently located. And uh, right now it's, it is in review. I have recently updated uh, Marianne who uh, is requesting on behalf of the Rotary Club. Uh, we do have a lot of drainage infrastructure on that property. So we just wanna make sure the alignment, you know, doesn't hit anything or isn't close if we wanna do work, but we will be responding uh, to Rotary in short order uh, about that with a formal response. Uh, we also have an inquiry on the relocation of the community garden from Sunset Avenue uh, from Libro. Um, this one, ha this request has been pending for a little bit, so I do owe uh, Deb Penner an update, and we'll endeavor to do that soon. Um, the, the proposed location that Libro is looking at uh, moving it to, we do have some concerns with, uh, so I think we do need to get back to Libro and just uh, talk to them about their goals. Uh, for the relocation and, you know, what their uh, motivation is to relocate and hopefully we can work together to find a solution. So again, pending, we'll, we will be get, getting back to, uh, back to them. Uh, the Horticulture Society has asked about uh, relocating flower planters in Memorial Park uh, and we have approved this, absolutely, but it's pretty wet out there these days right now. Uh, so until we get a little bit of a freeze, uh, or the weather dries up, we're, we don't want to drive a backhoe all through Memorial Park. Uh, so the Horticulture Society has been informed, but as soon as the weather allows, uh, we'll do it this year, or if the opportunity is missed first thing uh, at the beginning of the season, and, and they do know that. 
Amanda, um, where were they going to move it to in uh, downtown Watford? Yeah, uh, so I uh, I believe uh, one of the locations is in front of Libro, the new office, uh, and the other location I think is in front of the new municipal office, or I could I'm not quite sure where the second location is off the top of my head, but I do know that we we that our operations staff reviewed it in terms of like it makes sense for watering flowers. It's not an in, in, in impediment to like accessible travel on the sidewalks. Um, but I apologize, I'm not certain okay. <laughs> on that second location. Um, and I do have an add in. Oh, I have one more here. The Bluebird Park at Refresh, uh, also from the Horticultural Society. We know that they've come with a proposal through this committee that this committee approved. Uh, and I understand they had some trouble with contractors and stuff this year, but uh, I have asked uh, through their current president to have a meeting with them just so that we can get, I personally can get an understanding of what um, what their plans are and what the township involvement will be so that we can plan uh, our budget and our operations accordingly. Uh, and before we get to events, I do have one add-in uh, request that I'd like to speak to if I, could. Of course. There is, um, and I forgot about it, so my apologies, was we also did recently receive a request uh, about considering installing a colored crosswalk uh, in town. And uh, so I wanted just to let you know that we, that is still in review, but I, I also want to let you know that our council directly has um, considered installing a rainbow crosswalk in the past. And definitely on council, there's support uh, for that idea. Uh, the challenge is that uh, in the past, when we've approached the county of Lambton, because they do own and operate Navu Road, uh, to put in a rainbow crosswalk around on Navu Road is has not been permitted because it does not meet minimum maintenance, like it does not meet the actual requirements of crosswalks. Uh, so we can revisit that to see if maybe their their allowances have changed. It was probably it's definitely over at least two years since the last time we approached this uh, request to the County of Lambton. So we can definitely try again and see if they have a different policy in place. And of course, the other option is we do own and operate all of our roads, right? So um, even if it doesn't go across Navu, uh, there may be opportunity for other locations um, where it could make sense. So. That was the other item I wanted to respond. So I, we can add that to our tracking list. And I do know that our uh, public works manager, actually I, the first request did a lot of research on um, requirements for crosswalks. And while these are a popular trend and we'd love to, to have one, and I think we can, uh, they, they don't actually meet the road, <laughs> road authority requirements. So we just wanna think carefully about where we put it. So we will work on that and we can report back to the committee with uh, some options in the future. Sorry, I forgot that one. <laughs> so I got my draft report and I was right there and said color crosswalks. But anyway, uh, and then upcoming events. Uh, so we do have Silver Stick coming up. Uh, we're looking forward to a meeting with the board. We have scheduled or tentatively scheduled for December 2nd, I think, third maybe soon. Um, so we'll be talking about them and we are excited about supporting that tournament uh, and we have some good ideas to just support it. Um, the Santa Claus Parade is scheduled for, I have here December 6th, but I think that's the wrong date. Wrong. It is, fourth. It is December 4th. My apologies. So December 4th is the right date. Uh, so we have... Uh, tentative, I've spoken with the committee uh, last week. Uh, they're proceeding with the parade with uh, only uh, dis physical distancing. Uh, float registration is currently open for those who wish to uh, put in a float. I believe the theme this year is Disney, I believe. Yes. So that's exciting. Um, and we are working to assist with road closures, uh, promotions, and I also uh, have to follow up on the use of a PA system. So I think we're all on track and that I'm very happy we can have that event again.
after a year. Well, they still did it last year. It's just a bit different. Um, and Moonlight Madness, uh, we, it's not a municipal event, but we have a private community member who is organizing Moonlight Madness in downtown Watford for December 10th. And uh, we are consulting with them just they've, on a potential request for a road closure and some tent, tent requests. But um, that's also very exciting to have that happening. So those are the things that we're working on in Parks and Recreation right now, but I'm happy to take any questions or comments from, from anyone. Has anybody got any questions or comments? Um, no. I have one. I'd like to encourage anybody that's watching us on YouTube to take part in the Midnight Madness uh, to support our local businesses. Uh, we didn't get to have it last year, and so it'd be nice to see as many people out as we could and as many businesses as can take part. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I'm just scrolling down the agenda and it appears we're at the end of it. <laughs> Has anybody got any uh, more concerns or thoughts or silver stick, John? Uh, when is opening night? So this year, well, the tournament, we moved everything up this yeah. year away from Christmas. We were going from December 9th to the 12th for the Pee Wees and 16th to the 19th for the Bantams. Um, so we're out of the Christmas break and we're full both weeks. Oh, good. So we have our maximum number of games. We're going 12 games a day, except for the final days, nine, because we have other things going on. We need more time between games. Um, yeah. And we're not going to have an opening the big opening night that we usually have oh, because okay. of COVID restrictions and so on. We always had okay. that uh, prior to the first East Lampton game, but we're not doing that. So everything's a go. We're having our scheduling meeting on Thursday and we're having a meeting with the uh, park and rec staff on uh, December 2nd to get everything under control and we'll be good to go. Everybody's looking forward to it. What's After the last best What's the best way, John, to get the information out of when our local teams are playing? Like, you put it well, on our Facebook page, maybe, or? Yeah, that like might be, be nice to yeah. get as many people out as we can to watch our Peewees and our Bantams in action. Yeah, because um, we'll, we'll have the schedule out on Thursday night. Like, we put it right on. Yeah, and if we can get it to the... Uh, to Katie, maybe, and we can uh, get it out there on Facebook or. On, well, yeah, it'd be, that would be I, really good. I just like to see as many people as we can mm -hmm. out, get yeah. COVID behind us, and get going on. Now, Katie, are masks required when I'm watching a hockey game? When you're watching the hockey game inside of spectating, yes, uh, players aren't required to wear them on no, the ice. No. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're and the welcome. coach. Coaches are. Coaches wear them all the time, and uh, the officials don't, but the uh, everyone else in the arena, fully masked, so it's a safe environment. It'd be nice to get a lot of people out and see the, the new yeah. building. Right? And, yeah. That's my hope. Or do it. Okay. Has anybody else got anything for uh, the good of the Rec and Parks and Rec committee meeting? Well, that's pretty quick, guys. Um, could I have a motion to adjourn? Martina and John. Well, you're the only two, so <laughs> <laughs> all in favor. That's scary. Thanks a lot, folks. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.